our meteorologists and some of the different historians have said this is the worst flood St. Louis has seen in 100 years. Then to add insult to injury, uh, that probably uh, almost insensitive cliche would be to say when it rains, it pours. Just a few days later, there was another flash flood, and not quite as devastating, but piled on in areas. We, we heard over the scanner traffic, uh, first responders saying things like, uh, we're seeing heavy flooding in places where it doesn't usually flood. I mean, and, and this is, so it wasn't just your usual spots where, you know, an old infrastructure uh, was backing up. A wide path was something. Sometimes in flash floods, you see little pockets here and there. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. was the greater St. Louis region, a lot of it underwater all at once. It, it was interesting, too. There, there's a young 25-year-old Gen Z candidate, just barely old enough to run for Congress, running in the second congressional district. And we talked to him in compiling our voter guide, and asked him to the extent he thought fossil fuels contribute to climate change. What would he do about it from Congress? He answered the question about as quickly and as easy to understand as I've ever heard somebody say it. He said, look, it's fourth grade science. You put more carbon dioxide in a container, the faster it's going to heat up. And it's that rate of warming that is alarming climate scientists. So, you know, the, the political consequences, it's hard to say. Uh, there has been an interesting reaction uh, in this moment of gas prices and record profits for the oil companies, gas and oil companies. And, and yet, at the same time, a lot of people on, on the right side of the, on the Republican side of this uh, conversation, even while they're paying more than they've ever paid to fill up their gas tanks, they're still making the argument well, this is, we, we need to drill more. We need to create, we need to uh, have more gas. More gas is the answer. More gas would make it cheaper, I think, is the argument they're making. But why subject yourself to a system that is so reliant on the whims and wishes of Saudi Arabia and OPEC and Russia and all these other places when I think the people who want to see a cleaner energy transition say you wouldn't be so reliant on that if the, if the, power source was generated by the sun or the wind, those things that are right there in your backyard, not being brought in a pipeline from half a world away.